I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council meeting, December the 17th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Murner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members. <clears throat> you all don't mind standing for Mr. Cook for the invocation. <laughs> Please bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight. We also would ask you to take your blessings upon all of our first responders, both the sheriffs, the fire division, and our administration, as well as the folks that are gathered here. With that, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Sir, pledge time back. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have action on the minutes. So moved. Second. And Mr. Shammy. Mr. Shammy. Yep. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. <clears throat> Accepted 6 0. Fantastic. Any communications that are none tonight? Mr. Bridge? Uh, thank you, Mayor uh, Reynolds, uh, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. We'll start with our finance discussion. Uh, this month we have a verbal report, nothing's on paper yet. The reason that is, is we're doing our software conversion right now. Um, so we, uh, uh, we're not able to produce that report on Friday. Um, Debbie's here to give some verbal numbers and then once we are able to produce the report, I will email it out to council. Well, excited. On Monday of last week we went live. Um, so we're working through all the kinks in the system and uh, I'm really excited about the reporting. I think yes. you'll be pleased with the report that you're getting. Um, so year to date, our expenses were $4,965,164.97. Our revenue is $5,479,594.49. So to date, we've only spent 91.67% um, of what we appropriated, which is always good. Hopefully we can continue to do better at that. Um, our bank balance with our investments is $3,588,920.31. As the reports come through, as we move forward into the new year, um, we can adapt the reports to anything you'd like to see in them. So we'll talk about them, we'll, we'll, I'll give them to you and then kind of tell me what's not on it, maybe something else you'd like to see and we can, uh, that's what's really good about this new system is that we can, we can make the reports say whatever we want and get whatever information in them. So looking forward to that. Thank you. Council, any questions? No. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Let's start off with the service departments. The final section and a citywide sweep will begin uh, today, 12-17. Uh, we will be completed with the leaf pickup for the season on 12-21. Uh, I'd, I'd ask that please do not park on the leaf piles. Um, you know, we're unable to pick them up around the vehicles. You know, we don't want to scratch them, damage them, or or get blamed for uh, doing so. Um, any leaves left on the street that were not picked up by the end of this week um, will either have to be placed in your trash or you can drop them off at 600 West Madison Street, which is the old school. Uh, you can drop them off up until uh, Christmas Eve, 1224. Um, if you drop your leaves off behind the school, please take them out of the plastic bags. Uh, we spent probably like a half hour the other day just uh, peeling bags off of leaves uh, behind the school because we're working on, on wet days. We haul those. When we can't get the leaf machine on, we're hauling the piles from behind the school off to the various places that take our leaves. Uh, we have completed some street repairs uh, caused by the trash trucks. As I would had on your uh, last report, we still have more to do. And uh, completing some minor projects prior to the winter and I had to stated concrete swings, catch basins. That sidewalk that was at Van Crest that got completed and we will look to complete here in the next week or two, a catch basin down by our fat metals is one of our bad ones. Uh, we also had another bad one by um, good old lumber that we had gotten uh, fixed and completed. 
2018-2019 uh, various road projects, Gilwood Drive reconstruction project in particular. The 300 block of Gilwood Drive will be reconstructed this year from Kennison and, uh, up into Brookfield. We have already got the engineers on board and they started uh, requesting their utility locates. Uh, the feds have already given the state the ability for us to, um, or for them to encumber the funds which means we're allowed to spend those now. So we're gonna try and get the engineering done and get this out for bid, uh, hopefully before February-ish or sometime maybe before March. So before everybody else gets out, we can get our project coordinated. From my understanding, this is gonna be a very, 2019 is gonna be a very busy season for contractors, which is a, a carryover from 2018. 2019 wastewater plant influent building upgrade. Uh, we had our kickoff meeting on 12-12 with the engineers. Uh, we spent a couple hours uh, detailing our existing plant uh, plans and doing walk-arounds, getting information, that type of thing, so they can start uh, getting our plans ready for bidding, which should be in about an eight-week time frame, and then we'll get, uh, get that out for bid. Traffic signal upgrade project, we are basically all the way done with right-of-way except for one property, and that is the um, Rite Aid we're having issues, uh, well, the contractor we have hired has not been able to get a hold of the person who lives in New York who has the whole thing, so they're still working on trying to get that, that finalized. Um, we have until, I think, June to have right-of-way plans uh, completed, so uh, a possible thing that can happen with this is they don't respond, then we have to take them to court for eminent domain, and that just prolongs the process for what little piece we're doing uh, to put uh, a box on there. So it's more of a communication issue, and, and they are being compensated for this as well. And that is all I have on my current uh, uh, report. You can answer any questions on them or anything else. Council. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Kicker, just out of curiosity, where are we at with the uh, city vehicle uh, report that's being put together? Uh, I had passed that on to city manager Bridge, and um, it is in the, it's in the pack. Yeah. I'm missing mine then. Is it right underneath the page, your front page you got under his report? Uh -uh. No, there it is. I apologize. Okay, thank you. Um, if you want, you could jump some questions up and feel free. It'd probably be easier if you have questions about certain pieces of equipment, anything like that. Uh, shoot an email over to us and I can work on a few things and then I can, um, so if you ask something about one particular truck, I can respond to everybody, hey, we got a question on a truck or something, if anything like that, and maybe I can get further details, but it didn't leave much room to write a paragraph on each vehicle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kitko, in regards to this report, you've got the government deals marked on here. Does mm -hmm. that mean that we've got them on their auction sites? I had them on the site as available to bid. I just went to put them on active, and when I logged in, it told me my our account was, went back to not active, the whole site. So I've already emailed our representative, and he's supposed to get back with me and get our account active, but then, yeah, they're ready to just put for auction. All right, the next question. What about the fire hydrant there on Lake Avenue at Kirk? When does that do to be required? We were going to do that last week. We ran into a hiccup with um, equipment we got to use. Um, they're trying to get it in this week uh, to get the hydrant put in. Okay, next question. How much of this equipment that's showing as a needs to be replaced are we going to be putting in for the budget request? Do we have a ballpark number of pieces or amounts? I don't have a ballpark right off the top of my head, but I know we have been a couple of the departments um, had it scheduled out for some dump trucks, pickups, and things like that. Mowers in particular, no, we have not, um, except for I think the cemetery we had budgeted in the CIP for it, but the other ones we have, we've been just kind of pushing, pushing back on some of the departments that don't have the funding at this point. All right, then the kicker or the elephant in the room. Is a lot of this caused by possible, I guess the word is preventive maintenance, not being properly done? No, a lot of our vehicles actually still run. They're just getting weak. 
Um, body rust, like the green Dodge that I stated, is probably the worst of our body uh, vehicles. We bought that from ODNR as a used vehicle. And a lot of that stuff didn't show on the surface, but it was already being ate away up underneath. Tip, uh, I wouldn't say typical Dodge, but it come in those years where they had those issues. Um, a lot of our trucks are salt trucks. So to be able to repaint, cut off rocker panels, things like that, aren't always preventive maintenance, but a lot of that stuff comes from the inside out. You don't always see that. But most of our vehicles that are on there, still the engine starts, it drives, they're just getting wore out. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Uh, Mr. Bridge, Mr. Kitko, and Ms. Watson, would it be ideal, I mean, you know, we're, we're trying to put, you know, a, a new cop car out, it, it seems like at least every two years, it seems like, within reason. I mean, that's pretty close, I'd say. I don't know if it's exactly every two years, but would it be ideal to start looking at, and I'm not saying buying a brand, you know, for example, a, a, a dump truck or a, a cemetery truck, like the Dodge you were referring to, uh, and, and start uh, budgeting at least every year or every other year for some of these lower end cost vehicles like the trucks, maybe something used that's a little bit better. I mean, is that something that you think would be feasible in doing? Um, I think when we talk our CIP discussions and we talk about our budget, um, we can bring stuff forward, but council is also able to bring stuff forward too. So I think moving forward, we could look into doing that, but it always comes down to funding and going into debt or paying cash. So yeah. something, something we can look into, um, but we all have our opportunity during CIP, and then we have upcoming budget stuff coming up for uh, 19 here soon. So we can look at what funds we have when we close the year. If we need to go back and amend the CIP that we just did to facilitate ordering some vehicles, we're, we, we, are, we have every power to do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Council, anything else? Yep. Thank you. Mr. Pickrow. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. And moving on with the city manager report, our uh, police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, city manager, mayor, council, citizens of New Carlisle. For the month of November, uh, New Carlisle deputies were dispatched to 41 calls. Assaults, there were one. Domestic violence, one. Theft, we had eight. Non-injury crashes, we had three. Injury crash, we had one. Citations, there were 10. Drug complaints, we received none. Overdose, we had one. Suicide attempted, suicides attempted, we had one. And burglary, we also had one. And those are pretty low stats. Um, that's good. Uh, New Carlisle incidents and reports are down again compared to the previous months. And, and last month and this month, uh, they have been down. Crashes are about the same and thefts are normal for this time of year. Overall, October and November have been good months for New Carlisle citizens. And I hope we can continue that. December 21st through January 2nd, Tecumseh local schools will be on winter recess. Students will be out, so please drive with that in mind. Also, December 21st is the first day of winter and the shortest day of the year. After the 21st, our daylight hours will increase to just less than two minutes a day. So we're on our way after the 21st. <laughs> and as always, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Department at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. And this could be the phone call to solve the crime for us. So thank you. Council, any questions? Thank you so much, Sergeant Underwood. Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on to the city manager report, uh, fire chief had to go out on a run, so if he does come back, we'll give him a report. If not, council, if you have any questions, just email me, and I can get them off the fire chief. Um, and for informational items, patrol vehicle update, all our vehicles are back in service, so we're back up to four now. Uh, thanks to Howie and Dave for getting those uh, taken care of in a speedily, timely manner, and getting our deputies back with the four, uh, four cars that we do have. Health stats um, are attached. If you have any questions on that, I'll be tried to happily entertain them. Um, if not, I can get answers for everyone. City offices will be closed on Monday, December 24th for Christmas Eve. Also on Tuesday, December 25th for Christmas Day. On Friday, December 28th, the city, uh, all city operations will close at 1.30. We will have an employee re retirement party. I'll get the more on that here in a second. And of course, we're closed Tuesday, January 1st for New Year's Day. Uh, on that employee retirement, 
Uh, we will be saying goodbye to uh, a long-standing uh, employee of the city, 38 years of service. His name is Brent Nip 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 Nipfer. Uh, he is coming, retiring from our water department. So if you see Brent around town, thank him for his 38 years of service and dedication to the city of New Carlisle. He is taking with him a vast amount of knowledge. Uh, knowledge is very hard to replace and it takes a lot of time to replace. So we will definitely miss Brent from a professional standpoint, but we will also miss him dearly from a personal standpoint. So Brent, if you're watching, thank you for your 38 years of service, buddy. Tree lighting ceremony, Mr. Mayor, I got handed off to you, Mr. Vice Mayor. It was a fantastic event, so hats off to you. Uh, two years ago when you started this, it has grown exponen exponen exponentially since. Hats off to you guys. Um, with that being said, if you did attend and you noticed a big red mailbox there for uh, Letters to Santa Claus, that is now at the city building. Mm -hmm. So you are more than welcome to drop your letters off to Santa uh, at the city building uh, during normal business operating hours, and that's Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Upcoming, we got a town hall meeting, which after the first of the year, we'll get together and figure out when we want to have that. Uh, two, uh, 2019 operating budget with work sessions will be coming up here shortly. Uh, rules of council in the first meeting of um, the year will have to go out as well. And other year, uh, other year end year beginning items. So this time of year is kind of busy for us administration uh, <coughs> folks over here trying to wrap up the year and begin 2019. Um, so that is all I have for the city manager's report, and I'd be happily uh, to entertain any questions. Council. Well, Mr. Bridge, thank you guys and uh, Ron Wright for coming out and supporting it, and then obviously helping with the table and the chair situation, sure. and the chief trustee for the fire truck as always. And uh, I thought it was fantastic. It's good to see a lot of people out there, especially yourself. And it was a stuff. great event. Thank you. Yep. All right. Council, any other comments? All righty. Uh, comments from members of the public, please uh, keep comments to five minutes or less to your name and address. Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main Street. I just wanted to personally and publicly thank Randy Bridge for replacing the flagpole and the flag at Hensley Park. It had been down for almost two years. And I mentioned it to him and he got it taken care of right away. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good. Any other comments? Linda Eggleston, Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street, New Carlisle. I'd like to know what's happening in terms of making the council whole again. Um, I don't see anything on the agenda dealing with uh, setting a date for an election. If we're looking at a May election, though we're looking at petitions for running for that election having to be in the first week of February, that's coming up very, very fast. Uh, so I'd really appreciate it if somebody would address it. I'll do it. Uh, this council passed a motion, and it was to have our attorney write the legislation for it, and I guess we're still waiting on Lynette to have an open election. We passed it. A couple months ago, and it was to have a draft legislation for a May election, and to have it. Yeah, but you guys still have public. to answer your questions as far as do you want people on it open to people who already. When we did done the motion, it. we had it. For, it was open to the public. And there is some interpretation on the charter, whether it be because it says 90 days in Ohio election code, but our charter says 60 days. Yeah. So. Well, I was assuming when we passed the motion to have it, it was to be open and to have it the. Well, that write the legislation up, uh, the official legislation we were to pass it. Actually, I remember that. I said I would look into it. Um, there is just a resolution to proceed. That's all you need. But Lynette needs some question and answers about how you guys want to move forward. So I think that uh, what I will do is get her up here. We'll have to have her in here. And you guys need to discuss that with the attorney, how you want her to draft your legislation piece. That's the best I can do. Mr. Lindsay? I thought uh, I forget who made the motion to have that drafted. But I thought the motion, correct. pardon me? Mr. Cook. I thought the motion, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought the motion was made to have it open to whoever wanted to we run. Still need to, you still need to get to the 60 days and the 90 days. So I will have to get with Lynette, find out where she is in this. Um, since this is a council issue, I'll have to direct her to come up here and talk to you guys how you guys want to proceed with her. I was thinking the 
Board of Elections has to have it 90 days prior. But our charter says 60 days, and that was the issue. The, the first charter time. says 60 days for petitions, but they need it 90 days to get things ready for that, is my understanding. I will be making a call tomorrow to the board. I already called that. Jason Baker last week. Okay. And he said that you guys need to decide if you want 60 days or 90 days. You need to find out if you want the people who had uh, already done their petition to be able to do it, or you're going to open up to everyone. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done between Lynette and the Board of Elections and City Council. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is see if she's available in the first meeting in January to come up here and you guys can have an open discussion about how you guys want that a, a, a draft. Mr. Cook? Because at that point in time, it's just one, it's one resolution. No, I don't think I've ever seen anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Council, any other comments on this matter? <clears throat> nope. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Ms. McKenzie. Hi. Um, I'm Becky McKenzie, and my address is 521 Hamilton Avenue. Um, so I made a public records request for an itemized list of attorney fees accrued um, during the first part of the year. Um, I remember when we were going over the budget, there was talk about needing to increase the budget for that purpose. Um, so I'm just going to read over a couple of those items that I received. Um, so these fees are in addition to the general operations of the city. Um, $1,800 to respond to council members' threat to sue the city. Um, $9,500 to prepare for the hearing that the mayor and vice mayor requested and then that we didn't uh, move forward with after the vote. Uh, $1,300 to collect taxes from an elected official. $1,800 for a line item marked Mayor Weddings. And $20,000 accumulatively under heading Ethics Conduct of Council Members with a subheading of Mayor and or Vice Mayor Removal from Office. These expenses are very concerning to me, and it is my hope that some council members will more carefully consider their actions and behavior in the future. And I wanted to know how you planned on curbing attorney spending next year. Council, any comments? Mr. Lavin, you have something? Uh, no. Well, I think the one way we do it is we figured out that we now need Lynette to make a motion prior to any legislation, so that will curb it. Uh, I think that's something that we will discuss during our budget sessions. Hopefully we won't have any um, misconduct issues that we end up spending $20,000 on next year. Thank you. Comments from members of the public? Hearing none. Mr. Mrs. Burner. Resolutions, we have none this evening. Ordinances, um, we have one intro and four action. <coughs> ordinance 18-31, public hearing and action tonight. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for city employee health insurance. Council. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Next motion to adopt ordinance 18-31. Second. Second. Uh, explanation of this oh, ordinance sorry. is uh, for our yearly health insurance for our employees of the city. Um, we see only saw a 6% increase in premium, which is a fantastic increase. We would always like to see zero, but in the world of increased health costs, we will take a 6% increase any day. But again, this is for our medical insurance for our full-time city employees. Council, any comments, questions? Or Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I know I had sent an email, I believe, to you to ask you if you were going to get a copy of the insurance to look at prior to this vote. You said we couldn't get it until we voted on it? Is it's the same correct? thing they do every year. It's the same thing they did last year. You don't get the final numbers until you approve the premium, and then the contract comes out afterwards. It's the same thing the city's been doing for years upon years and any other governmental health insurance entity. So once we approve this, we'll get a copy of the 
of the once, once it's done and it's in my hands, you guys can have a copy of it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, any <clears throat> comments, questions, or concerns? Nope. Right. Mrs. Berner, call the roll. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ordinance accepted, five to one. Moving on, ordinance 18-32, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Sheriff of Clark County, Ohio for police protection within the city limits of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council. Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Lindsay. I move we accept ordinance 1832. Second. And then a second, Mr. Cook. Yes. And an explanation of this ordinance, uh, we contract out with Clark County Sheriff's Office to provide our deputy uh, patrol. Um, we do that every year, and this is for contract year 2019 for police service in the city of New Carlisle. Council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Bridge, yes. on, on this ordinance, and if, I just want to make sure I understood you last time I spoke with you about it, if this passes tonight, uh, we can still make changes to this. Say if we were to wanted to add a, a fifth deputy, fifth deputy, okay. or some other type of position that we feel would, would be needed. Yep, I don't think sheriff's office is going to. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Bridge. Quick question: uh, yes. We had a constituent bring up the fact of like if we had a deputy we didn't approve of. You still have the authority to can those deputies, I, correct? I, yeah, Might I, not can be write, I can write a letter of my concern. Yeah. And, which we've done in the past, and we, we have, have deputies yes, gone. Yes, I've utilized okay. that card before. Yes. All right, thank you. <coughs> thank other? you for the clarification. All right, any other comments from council on the police? Nope. Mrs. Burner. Okay. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Ordinance accepted 6-0. Moving on, Ordinance 18-33, <coughs> public hearing in action tonight, and Ordinance approving a contract between the city's AFSCME chapter and the city of New Carlisle for a three-year period. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Make an, a motion to adopt Ordinance 18-33. Uh, Council. Mr. Shannon. Mr. Bridge. Shannon got the okay. second. And an explanation of this ordinance, um, a lot of our uh, hourly staff, uh, they are unionized, um, and we have to renegotiate a work deal with them every three years. The last one expired, uh, well, I mean, the, new, the one will expire at the end of this year, December 31st, 2018, and the new one will take effect January 1st, 2019, to December 31st, 2021. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Cook. Mr. Mayor. In looking over the copy of this contract versus <clears throat> the one we had approved prior to this, I noticed several changes that I was not aware of that was going to be in this ordinance. At this point, I will be voting no on this ordinance. I think we need to discuss this ordinance and this contract a little bit further in the executive session before we go through this. So you're voting no, or are you tabling, or what? I would, I would love to see a table, <laughs> yes, but uh, you've already got a motion on the floor. Can I ask why? What, what, what is, as, why, as what's said, changed in there? There are, there are idiosyncrasies between the contract that we had approved previous and this contract that were not brought up and discussed. We had like six executive sessions. We, have, what's there? we had like five or six executives right. on the contract. And there are certain things in that session that either I was asleep, wasn't here, or didn't hear them. But there are things in that contract that I can, do not recall. Can you tell me which ones they are? I think there was uh, additional language put in there in regards to the uh, discrimination area. That was, that was discussed. 
If it was discussed, then I missed it. I'm sorry. At the very first one, the very first executive session we had. So what are you what are you doing, Mr. <clears throat> Cut? Are you tabling or is there a motion to approve? There's already board? a motion. There's a motion. There's a motion to approve. But you can still motion to table that. But don't you have to go through the vote first since the first motion was out? I, I do not believe so. Mrs. Watson would probably know because she's a fiscal officer at another entity. Okay. Well, yes, she would okay. know. Well, you know, I, I can only say what townships do, but yeah. I mean, you can always table a motion. Even if there's another motion on the floor, I believe so. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I know from that's what I township believe is experience correct. and what I Okay, well, we won't have another meeting and then the current contract expires on December 31st. So. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. If this is tabled, would it be possible to have another meeting later on this week? No, I'm not here. It's Christmas is like a week away. Yeah. Again, we had like five or six executive sessions on this. Um, um, I mean, to me, you got the pay where you wanted it. You got the health insurance where you wanted it. And now, all of a sudden, some discrimination thing, because the only thing that hasn't really dealt with the discrimination is employee discrimination for sexual orientation, gender identification, and stuff like that. <clears throat> Those are really only part of the thing that had to do with any kind of, of non-discrimination. But I think that we all should have a responsibility to make sure that anyone who wants to come work in the city of New Carl Isle is protected. But that was literally brought up, I think, at one of the very first executive sessions. <clears throat> Mr. Vice Mayor. The, uh, we had a ordinance, I believe it was, last month. Maybe, I don't remember when it was. And that ordinance failed on that same language. The, it failed uh, due to businesses and churches. Mm -hmm. This has to do strictly with city employees. Well, my concern with that is next month we'll see one to change city policy. As you should protect your city employees who want to come here and work. And yeah, you're right, there I, will be one coming up because we took out the one that have to deal with the schools and the churches. Yeah. But every council member up there should have the best of interest in protecting people who want to come work for this city. You have the power to protect what's going on in the city itself. The last one was pretty extensive and included business and schools and all that to repeat myself, but basically what I'm hearing at least two of you say, or one, is you don't want any protection for city employees either. That's not the case. Okay, then. The contract was changed, and in my estimation, I did not know whether, again, I missed it at that point, but that contract was changed. Mr. And Clark. I was not aware of that up Mr. until this contract was thrown at us this blood past okay. meeting. Is, this, is it true that I've given council updates after every executive session we had or every kind of meeting that we had with the um, union at Lynette's office? I did. I gave out multiple sheets that says this is what's changing. That has been on there since day one. At that point, Mr. Bridge, I have not seen that situation if i did not hear that in that first discussion i apologize for that okay that's my contention so is there a second to table the motion <clears throat> second there's a second wow. any discussion on the tabling yeah. um yeah my mr lowry yes mr okay. mayor thank you sorry uh, i think if this goes forth with being tabled um Again, we're shooting ourselves in the foot financially. I mean, we've discussed this time and time and time and time again at executive sessions. Um, that's just my two cents. I mean, like I said, Mr. Bridge said, we got we, we got the, the pay rates where we wanted them, the insurance where we wanted them, uh, and, and then we rem we removed, like you'd said, the churches, the schools, the businesses, and, and that was a lot of the hang up for some of us the last go around. So I, I don't see any issue with it. Mr. Bridge, Mr. Yes. Bridge, do we have a backstop in this case? But if this table passes, is there a backstop where that contract will, the current contract? At this, at this point, I, I'm, I would ask you guys pass the uh, thing so we can protect the people who's going to work here after January 1. 
And then once the uh, non-discrimination for city employees come up, fail that, do whatever you want with it, we can go back and amend this to take this out of it. Okay. But right now, this needs to pass. Okay. You can always go in and amend it back. Um, we'll have to get the union involved. Um, but if that's the sole reason why, I'm sorry. That's disgusting. And I'm about five seconds from walking out of this meeting. Mrs. Council, any other comments? No? Mrs. Berner, call the roll. And I'm calling it for the yes, table. So, yes, so okay. it would be Mr. Cook first. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Cook. Yes. The table for table. Vice Mayor Lindsay. This is for table. Yes, sir. Lindsay? Yes. Wow. Mayor Reynolds? No. Mr. Shammy? No. Mr. Lowry? No. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Three. Three. All right. Now back to the original motion. Any other comments on the original motion? Made by Councilman Mike Lowry. Hearing on, Mrs. Berger. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. No. Mr. Cook. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Based on what the city manager told us, I'm going to vote yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Ordinance, ordinance accepted for two. Mr. Lowry, did you vote? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Moving on, ordinance 18-34E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Clark County Sheriff's Office for, the, for fire and EMS dispatching services. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cook. So move. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, we changed uh, dispatching to Clark County uh, last year from the city of Springfield. Ended up saving the city um, some money, probably about 6000 upwards a year. Um, this year, we uh, would like to sign with them again. We did see a slight increase of what they call per capita rate. That raised up from $3.48 per citizen to $3.55 per citizen. Um, so the total amount um, will be $20,284.70 for the year. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Could you give us that figure again, Mr. Bridge? Yeah. Um, $20,284.70. And that's 10,142 due February 1st, and then the other half is due August 1st. And this is a reduction, correct? Yeah. Just like to clarify, mm -hmm. this is reducing it, and this is emergency, so this will need votes. I literally just got it. I hate Friday. emergencies. I know. I thought. Yeah, I <laughs> but really you're did saving it. money, so it's, it's a legitimate emergency to save money. So, this yeah, council, mm -hmm. Mr. Bridge, Mr. Lindsay, do you have something? I thought you no, I okay. just. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Burner. Uh, the chief has something. Oh, sir. Chief? I don't know if it was brought up while I was gone. Um, when we made that move last year to Clark County dispatching, it was probably the wisest move we made for the division because it allowed us to be part of their Mark's Radio buy this year. Okay. And we're, re money. we're receiving six mobiles, 20 handhelds, and 50 pagers at no cost to the division. Fantastic. Mrs. Burner. Good. Mr. Lowry. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. I really hate emergency ordinances. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Sheen. Yes. Accepted 6-0. So the other business. 
Uh, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Executive session, there is none tonight. Any other members of council for other business? Mr. Lowry, I know you have this you probably want to talk about. Yeah, yes, the uh, New Year's Eve ball drop is coming up on New Year's Eve. Uh, there's a couple uh, of these out here on the chair if anyone doesn't have one, but uh, starting at 9 o'clock on Main Street, I think the city will close down Main at 8 o'clock, if I remember correctly. Uh, we'll have food, music, raffle, ice sculpting, uh, fireworks at midnight. Uh, thank you to uh, Bobo Construction. They stepped up and helped us out a lot this year for, for making us one of our best ones yet. Uh, he kind of painted himself in a corner, though, because this is our ninth year. So I told him, unfortunately, he's going to have to do it again next year for the 10th. So I don't know what he thinks about that. But, uh, and also, he uh, is, is going to be donating uh, Bobo Construction uh, stem, uh, stemless wine glasses uh, that night to adults only. No alcohol in them, by the way. And, uh, and so uh, you can get those that night as well. Should be a lot of good fun for the family. So make sure you stop. What's that? What's that? Yeah, well, I know. So. It is. Mrs. Berner. Um, there will be no crime watch meetings until March. Oh, thank you. And then, Chief Trustee, would you like to give your report now? Sure. You don't mind? For the month of November, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 79 EMS calls in the city, 16 uh, EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to eight fire related calls in the city and be five five in elizabeth township uh, right now to date we're up to 1258 calls for the year we had three ms calls answered due to mutual aid due to um, medic 52 being on response by pike or clark town township we answered one mutual aid ms call for pike township and we answered three for bethel park in the month of uh, should have been november i'm sorry should have been november the division responded to four overdose calls they are back on the rise a little bit this time of the year. Thank you. Council, any comments for the chief? No. Thanks so much, chief. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Uh, just one other thing uh, before we head out. Uh, this, since this is the last meeting of the year, I just want to uh, say thank you to Ms. Watson for everybody else who helped with the uh, city Christmas party. It was a really nice event. Uh, it was nice to hang out with some of the city workers and be able to talk about things not related to the city of New Carlisle for a change. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, uh, thanks to everyone in the city, the citizens. Uh, you know, 2018 was an interesting year for New Carlisle. But, you know, I still think regardless, the city has definitely moved forward in a, in a lot of ways. You know, we've repaved and, and reconstructed more streets than the city has seen in a long time. Uh, our, you, know, the, you know, the big you know, money pit pool was finally made a turnaround. We've got a lot of good new people in our city administration, our deputies, our fire department. Is, they're all doing well. And, and we've got a lot of good, uh, you know, community involvement. Uh, like the tree lighting from Mr. Mayor, uh, I mean, a lot of citizens are getting in with these, uh, you know, the events at the library and things of that nature. So, you know, the town is what you make of it, I think. You know, you see a lot of people say that New Carlisle is, you know, a joke. It's not what it used to be. Uh, I, I love it when you see people, say, you know, when someone will say, well, someone stole a... Uh, you know, my son's bike out of the yard like it's the first time it's ever happened. I remember my bike got stolen back in the 80s, so it really hasn't changed a lot, yeah. uh, you know. But uh, the town is what you make of it, especially from a citizen's point of view. And if you don't like it, you know, either get involved up here, run for council, or just get involved as far as uh, volunteer-based projects, you know. It's amazing what a citizen can do uh, just by volunteering at the different groups and organizations. So everyone have a, a great Christmas and a happy new year. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I'm going to uh, speak on behalf of council. To all of you at that side of the room, we wish you a Merry Christmas, a safe one. Uh, if you're traveling, be safe. If you're drinking, be safer. Uh, <laughs> don't go hunting and drink. And uh, have a uh, good New Year while you're uh, out partying. Again, be safe. Uh, you don't want Sergeant Underwood to find in any of you. <laughs> Oh, he won't be on the road. He'll be partying too, won't you, sir? <laughs> Mr. I actually have lost some hearing between this meeting and our last meeting uh, on the firing range, so I apologize. I didn't hear what you said. Uh, and it's probably a good thing. <laughs> must have been the same meeting I was at. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, make a motion we adjourn for 2018. Second. We are adjourned.